The Isaiah Wall proclaims a Jewish prophet's vision of universal peace. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Isaiah lived in ancient Israel that for over a millennia included the territories that the UN considers illegally occupied by today's Jewish state. The Temple Mount that lies at the heart of Isaiah's prophecy is no longer considered by the UN to be the heritage or possession of the Jewish people. Indeed, the tiny country that Isaiah called home has become the focus of the majority of the UN's denunciations and has inspired more censure than all of today's tyrants put together. Iran, North Korea, and other brutal regimes systematically kill their citizens or deny them the most basic of human rights. Israel's northern neighbor, Syria, has murdered tens of thousands of innocent civilians. The regime has also authorized the extrajudicial killings of thousands of detainees. We now believe that the Syrian regime has installed a crematorium in the Sednaya prison complex which could dispose of detainees' remains with little evidence. Apparently, however, that isn't very important in the eyes of the UN General Assembly and Security Council, who continually pass one-sided resolutions that single out and condemn Israel. The UN's General Assembly votes on 70 to 100 resolutions annually. 15 to 20 of these regularly express disapproval of Israel. From 2012 through 2015, the Assembly adopted 97 resolutions criticizing various countries. 83 of these targeted Israel. That's 86% of all country-specific resolutions. A closer look at the Assembly's score sheet reveals that year after year, less than a quarter of its measures censure countries other than Israel. And while three-quarters of this global forum's written rage lambastes the Jewish state, precious few of the most repressive or blood-soaked regimes on Earth have received even a single rebuke. Supporters of Israel feel that it is harshly judged by standards that are not applied to its enemies. And too often this is true, particularly in some UN bodies. In August 2013, UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon reflected on Israel's treatment at the UN. There are some bias against the Israel, Israeli uh, people and uh, government. In December 2016, he told the UN Security Council, A disproportionate volume of resolutions, reports and conferences criticizing Israel. One of the more telling comments came inadvertently in November 2013, when a UN interpreter failed to silence her microphone as she addressed her colleague. I mean, I think when you have five statements, not five, but like a total of ten resolutions on Israel and Palestine, there's got to be something. I mean, I know it's a, yes, yes, it's right, but it's not the, oh, there's other really bad happening, nobody says anything. But the other stuff. Apologies. Okay, I understand there was a problem with interpretation. Israel is not larger than 8,019 square miles in total. It is the Middle East's only functioning democracy and champion of human rights. It is a world provider of humanitarian disaster relief and medical, agricultural, ecological, scientific, technological, and security innovations. But when seen through the lens of historical UN bias, the overwhelming majority of all the world's evils and all of the world's ills belong to the tiny Jewish homeland in which Isaiah spoke his vision of swords being beaten into plowshares. <laughs>